ಶರಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಭುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಆಲ್ಮೈಟಿ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾದ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ವಿ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುಯಲ್ ಎಸ್ಪೈರೆಂಟ್ as a seeker we always and not only we but the followers of other fellowship means the persons who believe in other religion they also have one goal and that is to meet god means to realize or experience anything about god now everyone want to meet or everyone want to see the form of god but in this world you just think if you want to meet uh, any political leader or a uh, president of your country or any minister or congressman or any other person you want to meet him first requirement to meet him that is you have to any contact or you have to you have his address now for us we want to meet god so first of all we should require bhagwan's address do you have bhagwan's address where is the god someone say bhagwan is in the temple means bhagwan is in the mandir the other says bhagwan is everywhere there is not a smallest particle in which the god is not reside god is everywhere now this both answer how the most controversial situation so now god is everywhere then it is easy for us to meet the god but mostly all the devotees or all the persons who wants to meet god they always have some desire in their mind in their heart or they have some special request for god or they have something which is their ob- uh, which is the main point to describe before the god means bhagwan i want to these things bhagwan i want these things i want this person and so and so but you just think if you want to request for something or if you want to ask something from a uh, even your mayor or any political person every political persons has two address one is his home means his residential address and the other is his office address the person is available at both <coughs> his residence as, uh, as well as his office but at resident we cannot meet him if we 
we are his relative if we have some contact means some personal contact with the person we can meet him at his resident but still in the resident we cannot do any work with which the wor- which work is only done in the office so for us if we want to just meet bhagwan then bhagwan is everywhere we can experience the god in this way we, we can feel the touch of god when the air is touching us at the time we should feel that we should think that the the same wind which has the contact of bhagwan which has the touch of bhagwan the same wind so the same air is touching me and that's why i have the contact of bhagwan whenever you see any beautiful things in the world which is made by you may say nature or bhagwan that things is also not made by any worldly person and so such beauty is also for us the contact of god in the same way when we feel when we see when we experience any wonder in this world that everything is the form of god and that in this way just as the one form of god is god is everywhere we can feel that form but we have some particular task and we have to meet for a particular person for fulfilling that task we have to meet that person in the office same thing if we want to perform any spiritual things like aarti like puja like special worship and uh, like doing kirtan and everything at the time we have to go in the mandir because bhagwan is also resides in the mandir mandir is the official address of bhagwan no doubt bhagwan is also resides in our heart we can do every spiritual things every pay, prayer every worship everything by heart because god is also resides in our heart now we have the address of bhagwan both the residential address and his official address but most of us we have some some kinds of our special desires our special needs and to fulfill fulfill our aim to fulfill our wishes we ask most of the things from bhagwan in the prayer most of us ask from bhagwan bhagwan please give me happiness please give me eternal happiness please give me the company of the saints and devotees so that i can worship you i can remember you more and more now some devotees also ask from bhagwan so some worldly things bhagwan i have some difficulties to uh to buy some luxury from of this world so please provide me some more money some may I ask from bhagwan very luxurious things so, uh very costly cars very big house but any person without asking from god such devotee are only 
in little numbers who has no any desire they have only desire to please god not anything than that do accept such duties most of the devotees have some desire and they have to pray to god for such desire to fulfilling the desires now we have desires so we have to meet god in his office but if you you meet in the past uh, any political person you know we have to pass many many security system we have to pass many check post and then after if we have luck we can meet the same thing happen in the bhagwan's house if we have address our car in uh, if we put our address in our navigator and start our car we definitely with the help of our navigator we can reach at the house of the person to whom we want to meet similarly we have address of bhagwan we can reach his house but if we don't know where is the door how can we enter the house the bhagwan's house is made is uh, the bhagwan's house is designed in such a way that nobody can easily decide where is the door because the door's design its color everything like the everything same as the outer wall so it is more difficult to find out the door to open the door that is the next question the door is working fully automatically now if we have no the, we have no any key no master key to open the door how can we open the door and if the door is not open then even though we are outside from the house of bhagwan we cannot meet the bhagwan so our most necessity is to open the door now first thing is to find out the door where is the door we don't know so we have this most difficult question even though we are just near to god but still we cannot see him because we have no idea of the door the door is not open for us that's why but there is no any question i mean there is no any spiritual question there is no problems no and difficulties which is not solved by the vachanamrit vachanamrit is the divine words of bhagwan himself and that's why for us there is everything in the vachanamrit so now we have problem to open the door to find out the door let we ask the vachanamrit in the vachanamrit bhagwan has given us the idea about this door and to open the door bhagwan has given us the key bhagwan says if a person maintains profound love towards the ekantik sant of god just as resolutely as he maintains profound love towards his own relatives then the gateway to liberation opens for him bhagwan says this thing in vachanamrut 54 of grada first chapter we have we all have love for our body as well as our bodily relatives bhagwan says in another vachanamrut that he has he has developed one thing in the 
every living being and that's why everybody can have affection for the other beings meaning a man has automatically means naturally he has affection he has love for women woman has automatically love for man a child has automatically developed love for his parents his mother and mother and father has naturally love for his children bhagwan says in this vachanamrut to open the door the door of bhagwan's divine abode aksardham bhagwan says we have no need to develop more love for god we have no need to develop more affection more love for our sadguru but bhagwan says we have to develop we have to convert our love which we have for our body relatives if we divert those love for bhagwan's ekantik sant just like we have ekantik sant in the form of our guruji if we divert our love the love which we have for the worldly persons if we divert that love in the form of ekantik sant in the form of puja guruji the door is automatically open we have no need to any key to open the door and if the door is open we can easily enter into the house and we can easily meet the bhagwan without opening this door we cannot meet the bhagwan so to meet bhagwan we many times perform many many times chanting his name performing his puja remembering his form doing more and more bhajan tap etc but sometimes we forget these things we forsake we forget to use this master key to open the door and this is very simple thing for this we have we have no do to any more thing just we have to think for this sentence of bhagwan and just try to divert our love for bhagwan not bhagwan but bhagwan says one should one should maintain profound love towards the ekantik sant of god because the sant is himself the doorway of the divine abode of bhagwan if we meet him because the door of bhagwan's house is such that if we touch it the door automatically open similarly if we come into contact with the ekantik sant our door is automatically open but now the another thing is that now we have the spiritual means highly spiritual person means ekantik sant in the form of our guruji now we have the door is open for us and now we enter into into the bhagwan's house and now we meet the bhagwan face to face but now the question again arises the question is that the secretary of bhagwan ask us you have two choice if you want to enjoy what you have today means your possessions your wealth your property your body relatives everything you may go from this house and enjoy such things the another thing is that the another option for us that is 
Bhagwan's secretary in the form of son says if you if you keep this form of Bhagwan forever with you you can you can earn whatever you just desire if you have this Bhagwan you have everything but for this you have to for you have to forsake you have to renounce your worldly possessions your worldly wealth property your body relatives everything this worldly enjoyments everything you have to you have to give up all these things then and then you can keep the form of god forever with you so now what is our choice that is in our that is in our hand bhagwan says th- these things in the vachanamrut that bhagwan says a person who has obtained a chintamani should look after it with great care the form of bhagwan that is also like a chintamani chintamani is is the is like one stone if we have such stone and if we desire for any worldly things we can get immediately but chintamani has limits it has limit because chintamani cannot provide us any divine things means chintamani cannot give us the bhagwan it, it cannot give us sant it cannot give us the virtues but it can only provide us with worldly things the another limitation of the chintamani is that chintamani cannot do cannot give us the another chintamani but bhagwan's form is something different from this chintamani because bhagwan there is no any other things in the world or any other world like bhagwan because bhagwan is bhagwan and that is why he can give us everything so bhagwan says in this vachanamrut a person keep chintamani with great care this is because it will enable him to obtain any object he desires same thing we have chintamani in the form of bhagwan if we keep this bhagwan with great care in our heart we have everything what is our desire we can get immediately according to our desire but for that we have to first get bhagwan but to meet bhagwan we have to open the door and the door is the ekantik sant if we meet bhagwan's ekantik sant if we profoundly keep his company if we do only what the sant says then we have no need to do any other spiritual endeavor to even please bhagwan because if we do what the sun says bhagwan automatically will please upon us now we have the ekantik sant in the form of puja guruji we have the divine form in the form of gansya maharaj now our duty is to obey each and every commands each and every words of our puja guru ji so that bhagwan can please upon us and we can please bhagwan so that we can forever keep the form of bhagwan in our heart in our eyes and there is no misery, there is no worldly misery can affect in our heart and that's why we can enjoy only eternal joy eternal happiness
घनश्याम महाराज जय नाउ अजीत विल डूइंग कथा एंड हिल गिव अस सम स्पिरिचुअल नॉलेज ऑफ द वचनामृत संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामी ए पूरण पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुदा कल्पतरु पारस चिंता मनि चार संत समानते एक नहीं में मन मा करयो विचार संत समानते एक नहीं में मन मा करयो विचार घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑलमाइटी आवर बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज पूज्यपाद गुरुजी पूज्य संतो in all of you devotees my humble jay swami nare sometimes we do something that we feel and we know it's wrong yet we do it without any fear we do something that's considered to be wrong in our society by our parents by our family members by everyone yet we still do it and we have this confidence after doing that wrong that we got away with it take for example suppose you had this really tough chemistry exam and you knew that the teacher was going to make it really tough so what you decided to do was cheat on the test obviously this is the wrong thing to do and you know it yet you made a cheat sheet in your calculator and saved all the formulas in your calculator by doing this whenever that equation came up you would use your calculator and look and then fit the proper formula and cheat on the test you knew that no one knows about this and you got away with it after one week your teacher gives you your exam back and says great job you got a 95% you feel absolutely fantastic you feel great obviously you knew that you cheated but why did you feel good because you were confident you got away with cheating yet you never thought in your mind at all at once that someone was looking at me while i was cheating someone was watching me who we don't know someone yet you continued to do this and it became a habit so you decide to take advantage of your sneaky tactics and you keep doing this but you don't know that that who that's watching is bhagwan himself now bhagwan has many many powers just like how in when we watch tv shows we have these superheroes that have many many powers 
Similarly, Bhagwan has many, many powers, and one of his powers is called Antaryami, meaning he's omniscient, omnipresent. What does that mean? Well, he's completely and always in existence everywhere. He is everywhere. Where there is nothing, he is there. Where there is everything, he is there. So there's no place on this earth or on this universe, or you can even say in infinite universes or infinite abodes of God where there is not Bhagwan Swaminare. Even in the smallest atom to the great large oceans, Bhagwan is there. It's just a matter of seeing and perspecting. Take, for example, if you don't understand, oxygen. We breathe it every day. We need it to breathe, we need it to live, correct? Yet, we breathe it, yet we don't see it. Do you see oxygen? No. It's still there. It's in the air. It's everywhere you go. If you go inside a building, it doesn't mean that there's less oxygen in the building, not by outside. If you go outside, it doesn't mean that oxygen is not there. Everywhere is oxygen, everywhere you go. In the same exact way, you can't see oxygen yet. It's still there. Bhagwan, you can't see him. But he's still there watching each and every one of your modes, moves, karmas. You can say everything. Okay, let's say you didn't understand that example. Let me give you another example. Your principal, the greatest guy in the world. You love him. He's great. He leads your school and he's very, very good at what he does. But something that you didn't know about your principal is that inside of his office, he has this really high surveillance system where there's about 20 cameras inside and 20 cameras outside all over the premises, monitoring each and every one of you. If you go inside of a room, he knows. If you go in the gym, he knows. Everywhere you go inside of that building or outside of that building, he knows. He is watching from his office, monitoring each and every one of you without any kind of saying that I'm looking at you, I'm watching you. Yet, he's still watching. In the same particular manner, Bhagwan, sitting in his office, Akshardham, is watching each and every one of us via his, you can say, surveillance camera or in this form, his antaryami power, meaning his omnipresent power. He is watching each and every one of us. No matter if we do something good, he's marking that down, or if we do something bad, he's still marking that down. Lastly, before I get into my story, TV, everyone watches it, right? Not as of right now, but about 30, 40 years ago, TVs used to have those waves coming because antenna waves because technology was not up to date at that time. Well, you are able to see the TV, but you are not able to see the waves, are you? The waves are coming in, giving the TV its feed, its show, whatever it's giving to you to watch, but the waves are invisible. Yet, you know that without the waves, the TV is unable to even display anything. In the same exact way, Bhagwan, his powers are in the form of waves. He is able to see everything. He's able to know everything. Yet, you can't tell or you can't see that. So these are just three simple examples in your daily life that I gave to you. That, we can, that how we can understand Bhagwan's great power of how he's Antaryami. But a story 200 years ago in the time of Sriji Maharaj, I wanted to tell you this story. His name is Ladudanji. He's from the village of Rajas, or he's from the village of Khan in the state of Rajasthan in India. From the beginning, from birth, he was a poet and a singer. And after he graduated from Buj, 
He sang in many, many kingdoms, and his name was all over, not only Gujarat, but India, because of his infinite, infamous poetry and his singing. All the kings admired him. So he would go kingdom to kingdom and sing for the kings. And the kings would become so pleased that they would offer him many, many luxuries, such as gold or living accommodations or garments or anything he wanted. So at one time, Laudanji went to visit Bhavnagar. There he saw and met King Vajesi. Now this king was very admirable and had many, many great qualities. So when Laudanji saw him, it was very easy to say his qualities and sing his qualities. So at once, Laudanji, in the courtyard, in front of the whole assembly, started to sing praises and poetry and kirtans about King Vajesi. Everyone was glorified and everyone was so pleased that afterwards, King Vajesi said, I'm so pleased by your poetry and your singing that I want to make golden ornaments for you. So, obviously, Laruanji enjoyed these luxuries at that time. So he accepted and said, of course. So what King Vajisi did was called his, uh, you can say, goldsmith, who took the measurements for the body, you know, the wrist, the neck, everything, so he can make or customize these ornaments according to Larulanji's figure. So the goldsmith came and started taking measurements of his wrist, of his waist, of his neck, and Larulanji observed a tilak and a chamlo on his forehead, was astonished at this time, who and why are you wearing this and what is this? At that time, the king was right there and said, Larulanji, I am also asking this goldsmith, who is this? And he keeps telling me that this Swaminarayan, this Swaminarayan is here, and the Gatis say that he's Bhagwan, but I don't believe it at all. And I strongly suggest and I challenge you to prove that he's not Swaminarayan. So at that time, Lardanji was very confident, bold, and famous. So he had confidence to go up against anyone because he had the skill of poetry, he had the skill of singing, and also he was well known throughout the lands. So there was nothing stopping him. So he took up the challenge, but he didn't know what he was getting into. So while he was going on his way to meet Bhagwan in the village of Gadara, he started to think that obviously I have to say take some kind of test, right, in order to prove that if he is God or not. So he decided to test Bhagwan with four particular things. Number one, he thought in his mind, he's thinking, while he's walking, while he's taking his journey to Gadara, he's thinking that these things, if they occur, all, all of them, at once, then he is God, and I will believe him to be God. So number one, he's thinking that when I enter the courtyard, he'll call me by his name, my name, Larudanji, and enter. Number two, he'll be wearing a rose garland. At that time, the heat was so unbearable. Let me tell you, these things are impossible. At that time, the heat was so unbearable that roses could not even survive. So Larudanji knew this purposely. He decided to test Bhagwan and say that Bhagwan will be wearing a rose garland and when I enter and he calls me by his name, he'll take off the rose garland and put it on my shoulders. That's number two. Number three, Bhagwan will be doing the Gatha of Srimad Bhagwat on a black cloth, meaning there'll be a small table set up, there'll be a black cloth and over it will be the Srimad Bhagwat and Bhagwan will be discoursing, giving lectures on the Srimad Bhagwat. And number four, after Bhagwan meets me and puts the garland on top of me, then he'll stretch his feet out. And if he truly is God, then 
I will be able to see the 16 symbols on his feet. These were the four thoughts that he had in his mind while walking to Gadara. So here we go. He reaches Gadara, the outskirts, and he has a smile on his face because he knows these things are nearly impossible from happening. Yet, with that smile, he enters Gadara. And then he enters the courtyard of Dada Kachar. And there you go. Number one, Bhagwan spots him entering. And he, at once, Bhagwan says, Come, Ladulanji, come. We were just waiting for you. At once, Ladulanji, he was like, This can't be happening because my thoughts are actually occurring. So that's number one. As he got closer and closer, Bhagwan started praising about him, how he's well known throughout the kingdoms, and how he sings great, and how he writes great poetry. After that, he gets closer to Bhagwan, and Laurudanji sees a red rose garland around Bhagwan's neck. And Bhagwan takes it off and puts it on him. Number two, fulfilled. And he feels very happy now. He knows that there is something different about the person who he's meeting. After that, he observes that Bhagwan is also doing katha of the Srimad Bhagwat on a black cloth underneath the table. There's a black cloth and there's a Srimad Bhagwat and he's doing katha. That's number three that's fulfilled. And finally, after giving the rose garland to him, Bhagwan himself stretches his feet out and Bhagwan gives darshan of his 16 symbols which represents the supreme entity which is Bhagwan Swaminarayan an identification that this is the supreme lord and there he falls at Bhagwan's feet such a person who kings and kings would keep him or beg to stay in his kingdom and sing their praises offer him tons and tons of gold such a person who had property beyond anyone at that time, such a person who had horses and cattle compared to that of today's Mercedes and BMWs, such a person who had properties of living as well as garments and food beyond all imagination, gives up everything and falls at the feet of Bhagwan Swaminare. Just think about the supremacy of him. And on our subject is omnipresent power that he is antaryami. If he wasn't antaryami, then how did he know these four thoughts that Ladudanji was thinking of? And not only that, but successfully, successfully executing each and every thought according to the order where Ladudanji thought of and fulfilling his thought, fulfilling his desires. And there at once, Ladudanji gives up everything and falls at the feet of Bhagwan. Ladudanji begs, Bhagwan, please make me your Swami, or please make me your saint. And there, after, Bhagwan sees that he has given up everything. Bhagwan Swaminarayan makes him his saint, and his prominent and profiled highly name, he names him Sri Rangdas but later changes it to Brahmanand Swami, which we know by. And Brahmanand Swami composes thousands and thousands of kirtans, which prove the supremacy of Bhagwan, the glory of Bhagwan, the Mahima of God. And seeing this, Bhagwan becomes much pleased. But getting back to the subject at hand, Bhagwan's omniscient, omnipresent, antaryami power, he is everywhere. And he is able to know each and every one of our thoughts. So, before we do anything, before we even do something that we know is wrong, such as te cheating on a test, or such as doing anything which is immoral, think, when that thought occurs, who's watching me? Take that who out and say, God is watching me. So, by that fear, you'll know that Bhagwan is watching and I can't do this, or he won't become pleased upon me. Please remember this point wherever you go. By this, three things will happen. Number one, you'll stay fearful of God. 
So you won't be able to any, do any immoral acts. Number two, you'll stay fearless. Why? Because you know that Bhagwan is watching me, Bhagwan is with me. So then any evil influences outside of the world are unable to touch me. And number three, you'll be able to quickly progress in the spiritual path because you are starting to understand who Bhagwan is and how he is. So please remember these points. And whenever you are about to do something wrong or whenever your mind tells you, do this, which is immoral, then stop and think and say to your mind that Bhagwan is watching me. Hare Krishna Maharaj Nijay Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvadeva Suram Bhakti Dharam Atmajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Kesavam Kamadam Karam Swaminarayanam Nilakantham Vajay Ganesham Maharaj Nijay